Welcome to Beyond Neutral. I'm your host, Paula Reed. I think of the journey of life as a road that we're driving down. We get to speed up on the straightaways, ease back on the curves, and I don't know about you, but I've certainly had the obstacle in the roadway that I never expected to see, and I had to either slam my brakes on or swerve to avoid hitting it. But whether we're talking about our careers or relationships or even just managing through life's phases, life is all about shifting and moving from one place to another. The challenge is that sometimes in trying to get from where we were to where we want to be, we can get stuck while we're trying to shift. And we land in what I call the neutral space, where we're applying old ways of thinking to new situations. Join me and some incredibly inspiring guests as we talk about what it takes to shift into gear and get to where you want to be. Because here's the deal. If you're sitting in neutral, you're going nowhere. Welcome to today's episode of Beyond Neutral. I'm your host, Paula Reed. Hey, I hope that you heard my episode last week where I interviewed Elizabeth Cowper. She is an amazing woman. If you didn't, please go back and listen to it because she's so inspiring. Elizabeth is a culture warrior, and she is all about creating new ways of ensuring a high level of inclusion and evolved and positive cultures within the workplace. She's a former head of HR for a number of companies uh, based in Europe. She's out of the UK. She recently launched a company called Ludo, which is a platform specifically focused on inclusion around women going through pregnancy. It will have other iterations in the future when she launches new modules, but right now it's specifically to support women through pregnancy. So amazing thing because supporting women through pregnancy is a massive economic issue. And this is specific to the workplace and specific to ensuring that women do not opt out of the workforce as a result of motherhood. And there is a very high percentage of women who do. They go through pregnancy, they opt out of the workforce shortly after their maternity leave. And the impact uh, long-term is that they continue to have challenges in income equality and they lose independence and their careers get stalled and so on and so on and so on. So Elizabeth saw a tremendous need in the marketplace to do what she could to help bridge that gap, so to speak. So she has focused on how companies support women through that journey. I would like to have a conversation today about how women need to advocate for themselves through that journey and what they need to think about. And this is not a women's issue. And this episode is not just for women. This is for everybody, because once again, this is a societal issue. This is a partnership issue. And so please stay tuned and listen to how you, what you need to think about and what it's like to be a, a, you know, a woman going through motherhood for the first time and trying to balance a career. So I have had so many conversations and coached so many women through this process. And inevitably the very first emotion obviously is joy when somebody says, oh, I'm, you know, it's usually somebody that I've worked with over time and they say, oh, I have big news. I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, that's exciting. And it, you know, and once you get over that initial, yes, isn't that great news? You hear the sigh and you hear the the fear that starts to, to seep in. And that fear is coming from several different places. That fear is coming from quite often their own fear, your own fear of what it means to your own personal identity. What is this new thing going to be? What is that going to do to me? How am I going to think about myself differently? The fear comes from how are the other people in the workforce going to think about me? How are my my managers and my leaders and my coworkers now going to think about me when I am a working mother as opposed to just a working woman? And the reality is it's different. There's no question about it. Let's be honest about this. There is a transition that happens there. I do believe that how women lean into that process can be incredibly impactful in how they experience that process. So the fear of identity shift, that is something that we 
will deal with, we all will deal with at varying points in our life. And it is massive. We get so much validation from our work and how we see ourselves in our work that when that shifts, it's seismic. And it doesn't just happen through motherhood. That happens when, if you've worked for a company for a very long time and really a company that has a significant culture around company identity, that shift is massive. When you retire, that shift is massive. Your identity shift is massive. And by the way, the, the, here's the good news about anybody who's now going into motherhood. It's a massive identity shift when your kids move out and you're no longer a quote unquote full-time mother. So it doesn't end. So understanding identity and the things that, that impact it is, is really important. One of the first things that I will talk to my clients about is understanding their identity. Who are they? And we tend to be one dimensional in that sometimes. And so going through an exercise of all the parts that make up your identity of who you are is a really helpful exercise in some ways of relieving that fear of you're this one-dimensional person and now that's about to be something else and you don't know what that is. You're not a one-dimensional person. We are all multiple identities that all kind of roll up to be one giant identity. So going through an identity exercise of who you are and all the facets of who you are is a really helpful first step. The other fear there is inevitably, how am I going to do all of this? And, and that's amazing because you, you think about your job right now and how much energy it takes and how much of yourself you use in that process. And you're thinking, how do I possibly do this other full-time thing? And here's the, here's the story. Here's the secret to that. You do it. So it's not unlike in a lot of ways, and I use this example often with people, it's not unlike you know, stepping up to another level of leadership, right? You understand, you, you have a new sense of deliverables, okay? You have a new sense of, of what your highest and best use is, and it becomes a very honed skill. So one of the things, one of the exercises that I go through with, you know, executives, with leaders, with anybody trying to gain greater efficiency, greater effectiveness, is really the exercise of what would stopping doing certain things enable you to do with other things? How would you use your time differently? So the exercise is, what do you need to stop doing or what could you stop doing in order to start doing other things? And the reality is, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, there is a list of things you can stop doing. Nobody is a supercomputing machine, okay? We all have a tendency to become entangled, I will say, in things that are not our highest and best use. And regularly going through this audit exercise of what you could give up in order to get other things is a phenomenal exercise. It's especially a great exercise if you're about to go out on maternity leave and you're thinking about that transition. As I said, it's much like elevating to a new level of leadership. You have to think about what, you, what your highest and best use is and you have to really focus on what your deliverables are and manage the boundaries that you have to manage within, which will be different. And, you know, it's, it's a, boundaries are a really funny thing. And I say this because, you know, I, for years would, you know, come to work. I, you know, was the primary breadwinner in my family. I ran this business. I had two kids at home. I vowed to be there every single night, made dinner, put it on the table. Like I, I just somehow, and I, I get tired thinking about it today, but I somehow did that. And I had created these boundaries that I didn't create them. My life created them in a lot of ways, right? Because I had to be home to relieve my nanny. I had to feed my kids. I had to do those things. So I had these, these boundaries that were put in place. And what's amazing is as my kids got older and they were no longer requiring that, and now they're, they've moved out and my nest is empty and those boundaries are gone, I had to now create them for myself because I was less efficient. So the reality is, 
that we create efficiencies based on the time that we have to work within. And so start creating them. Start creating the boundaries that you know you're going to have and think about what you need to give up and how you give those up. How do you replace those? What really needs to get done? That's number two. Number three is lean into the fear and ask for help. It's actually number three and four. So leaning into the fear is recognizing that you're not the first person who is terrified of this process. It's a terrifying process. <laughs> Recognize you're not the first person and, and start advocating for yourself. Women are not great advocators. There's a book that I love, and I've given it to a number of clients called How Women Rise. It's by Sally Helgeson. And in that book, she talks about the fact that women have a really hard time self-advocating. And we do. It's true. There's not a better time to start self-advocating than thinking about what you're going to need from maternity leave, what you're going to need uh, in order to go through that process and what you're going to need in order to reintegrate. And so think about that. Sit and think about that and lean into that process. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Lean into talking with your manager about, hey, this is, I'm going out. What do you need from me? What do I need from you? Talk about what you're afraid of around reintegration. Talk about what you're concerned about missing. Talk about how you can have both the time and the space that you need to go through this process and then the time and the space that you need to reintegrate back into, you know, your, what was quote unquote, your old life, which is now your new life in a different way. Lean in, have those conversations and start a self-advocacy practice. It will pay dividends every day for the rest of your life if you can learn to do that now. So no better time to do it than the present. The reality is that life is full of these milestones. And as I said earlier, it's not the first time that you're going to go through this need to shift the way you think about yourself, the way you think about work and what work needs to give you, and the way you think about work and what you need to give work. And the reality is it doesn't mean your performance suffers. It means the way that you reach your goals changes. And I would like to say it changes for the better because you come into this with a much broader perspective on life. And having a broader perspective is always beneficial to the people around you because the more you understand, the, the more empathetic you can be to other situations. And the broader lens that you look at things, the more opportunities that you have to learn. So that's all positive. So learn to kind of embrace this milestone for what it is and for how amazing it is and also for how challenging it is. And a lot of times women have a tendency to talk about this process only from the positive. And I think we do ourselves a significant disservice in that. I think that there are obviously, it's incredibly joyful, it's incredibly wonderful, it's also exhausting, it's also physically challenging, and it's also emotionally challenging. And so being honest about that with yourself and with other people is huge. The more that when somebody says to you, how is it going? And you can say, you know what? It's really hard. The more you're going to hear from them. Oh yeah, it's, it's tough. It's hard. So be willing to be honest. Don't give you, don't put the pressure on yourself to have a storybook opportunity. Have a reality opportunity. It's so much easier to navigate in reality than it is in fantasy. So. Thank you to Elizabeth for taking a passion that she has and bringing this dialogue forward and, uh, you know, opening the door to have these conversations because they mean a lot to everybody. And so I'm very grateful to her that we were able to, to discuss this. By the way, I have a part two episode coming up with her, which is focused on where she got the strength, the courage, and the insight to be able to do something like this. And uh, so join me next week for part two of that conversation. It's great. Uh, but that's my story for today. That's the road we're driving down this afternoon, today, or whenever you hear this. Um, 
Hope everything's going well with you. Keep driving and we'll see you next week. Hey, thanks so much for joining us this week on Beyond Neutral. I'm your host, Paula Reed. Make sure to visit our website, www.readandco.com for this week's show notes. And if you found value in today's episode, I would appreciate you giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts or share it with a friend. Also, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. All of this helps to support the show. Have a great week.